Welcome back to People in the News. We actually have a Clay Aiken CD in my home. The person who bought it is nine years old. That isn't entirely a compliment to Clay Aiken, but it is a compliment to American Idol, because without that program, there wouldn't be that CD. Once again, here's Kira Phillips. I'm good with the looks today. <laughs> wow, that's a great song. Beautiful. So who is this geeky, skinny guy stealing the spotlight from Idol winner Ruben Stoddard? Nobody, I think, if they were being honest, would ever say, you know what, this kid is going to be a superstar. <laughs> He's a little skinny, little dorky kid from the South. He has a redneck accent. You know, what are we going to do with this guy? Here he is at an American Idol audition. I'm the American Idol. Since that time, 25-year-old Clay Aiken has transformed from average Joe I'm really nervous. <laughs> to idolized double platinum pop star. I stretch his face. Stretch his hand. I'm in heaven. A quantum leap from hick to hip. <laughs> Clay Aiken was born Clayton Grissom on November 30th, 1978. He grew up here in this wooded middle-class neighborhood in Raleigh, North Carolina. As a child, you know, there was the, there was the Putt Putt place and there was the Chuck E. Cheese and that was kind of cool to go to. I spent my childhood, you know, up till about seven with just me and my mother. We had a pretty, uh, a pretty quiet deal going on, a pretty good routine. Clay was raised mostly by his mom and grandmother. He spent little time with his real father. But his father and I separated when he was a year old, so he never got to see his father a lot. Not by his choosing or my choosing. His dad just didn't come to see him. His mom worked as an interior decorator for Sears. It's where Clay got his first taste in showbiz. He was always talkative, always singing, very inquisitive. We used to take him to where I work, and the people there would put him on the counter and pay him to sing. So he'd stand on the counter. He, I guess I could say he got his start at Sears. <laughs> he sang all the time. He'd sit in that little swing with his papa and he hooked a chain up. They said, I can't swing. Clayton would sing his little hard hat. He loved music and school, but didn't take to sports. My mom was always very supportive of, of what I did. And we tried the baseball thing for a while. My feet go completely out to the side and I run like a weirdo. And so, um. <laughs> So, she, you know, she didn't push me to do anything, and she really never pushed me to do music. Clay didn't have to be pushed. He joined the Raleigh Boys Choir and won lead roles in high school musicals. Clay sang, this is the moment from um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And it, it was just, it was a showstopper. And the kids knew it, and, and the audience knew it. <laughs> But off stage, there were troubles at home. Clay's attempts to establish a relationship with his real father, Vernon Grissom, failed. There was a period where um, I saw I saw him frequently and saw him regularly. Um, but then, when when the relationship kind of soured, some, um, I moved on. You know, I had I had what I needed at home. In July's Rolling Stone magazine. Clay referred to his dad as his sperm donor and claimed that Grissom had been abusive towards his mother. If anything, I think that I'm stronger for, for, um, for knowing him um, and knowing who he was and what I didn't want to be. His dad died last week. Clay didn't attend the funeral. As a teenager, he had severed all ties with his father and changed his last name to Aiken. He also had a change of heart about music. I think that I, my passion for teaching came out of one of those phases where I was tired of being known as the singer. So a friend of mine convinced me to come work with her at the Y um, just one evening a week. Um, and I started working with, with her and loved it so much I decided to do the summer camp program. He went on to attend the University of North Carolina Charlotte with the goal of becoming a teacher. Clay became most interested in special education. He took a part-time job working with a 12-year-old autistic boy named Michael Bubel. He knew about autism. He was very outgoing. Uh, one of the first things he said is, I don't like to think of these children as being different. They're just kids, and I'm excited to work with them. Look at you. Look at you. Meeting Michael's mom, Diane, changed the course of Clay's life. 
After hearing him sing, she convinced him to audition for American Idol. And I was like, no, it's not in me to, to risk that and, and to, take that type of, to take that type of leap. I'm not that big of an entrepreneur. And um, she finally kept saying, listen, just go do it. He's like, oh, they're not going to take me seriously, you know. I don't sing pop, you know, I'm more of a crooner, and I don't have the image. I don't look anything like a Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I'm signing a picture on Rolling Stone. How crazy is that? When we return, he's no Justin. They're trying to make me look good. It's a hard job. But he proves you don't need pop star looks to make it to the top. I'm slipping. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> don't, use that, don't use that one. And the judge, who wreaked havoc on the idols. It can be a little embarrassing when he tells you that, you, that he, he prefers you with his eyes closed. <laughs> I prefer you with your mouth shut. <laughs>